What's up bosses? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa and this channel is all about entrepreneurship, digital marketing and selling online. So today we're going to talk about the three Etsy hacks that are really going to help you increase traffic and sales on Etsy and grow a profitable business. Now, of course, there are no business hacks. You really have to work your way up to building a successful business long term. But these three things that I want to share with you today have really helped me. They've really helped my clients and my students. And we've seen some direct results because of these three hacks. So if you're interested in growing your Etsy shop and growing a profitable business online, then keep on watching. Now, the first hack is to use relevant keywords in your titles and your tags. And by relevant, I mean you want to find keywords to use in your listing that are exactly what shoppers are actually typing into the search bar to find an item like yours. The reason why you want this is because Etsy actually favors relevancy. So let's say you name your item orange knitted sweater, but people are actually typing in knitted sweater that's orange. If you actually use the keywords that the shoppers are actually typing into the search bar, you're more likely to show up in search, which means you're more likely to convert those shoppers into buyers. The reason why I want to bring up relevancy as a hack is because a lot of times people will come to me and tell me that they think their SEO is great, but they're not getting sales. And it could be because they just need to use more relevant keywords. For example, I had a client that it took her two years to make 200 sales and she was in or is in a very competitive niche. She sells printable wall art. And when she came to me, she was ready to throw in the towel and I took a look at her shop and honestly, her listings looked great, her SEO looked good, her photos were amazing. And I was actually surprised that she only made 200 sales in two years as well. But then once we crafted an SEO strategy and we included relevant keyword terms, she made 200 sales again, but this time in two months. So what took her two years to do took her two months once she had an SEO strategy that included relevant keyword terms. For example, she had this beautiful set of three of art prints and she titled it something like three piece wall art set or something like that. And when we changed that keyword to a relevant keyword of what people were actually searching in the search bar, her ranking in search started to increase, which meant her sales were increasing. Etsy likes that, so it kept pushing her listing. And now this set of three is a bestseller on Etsy. And if you're wondering, well, how do I figure out what people are searching for, the exact keyword terms? I really highly suggest you invest in Marmalade or E-Rank. I personally love Marmalade and I have a two week free trial for you. If you want to give it a go, the link is down below in the description box, but that's how I find relevant keyword terms because Marmalade will tell you the actual engagement of that term, the search results and how much competition there is for that keyword. Now, like I said earlier, I gave my client an SEO strategy. So relevancy is just one piece of it. If you're interested in learning more about SEO strategy and you're serious about growing your Etsy shop, you're going to want to check out the free training that I'm going to link down below. This is a 60 minute free training. I can't do a 60 minute video and expect everyone to actually watch it. So if you're serious about growing your Etsy business, go to the link below, go to the pinned comment to this video and sign up for the 100% free training. It's really going to help you understand how to build a successful Etsy shop. Hack number two is to actually turn on Etsy ads. Now, I don't mean turn on Etsy ads as a long term strategy, because I do believe that we really want to make sure that your offer is on point, that people are buying it first without ads, and then maybe you can incorporate a very small ad budget. But the reason why I suggest that you turn on ads for maybe just a week or two is because Etsy gives you some really awesome keyword insight when you do this. When you turn on ads, you can see the actual click through rate to your listing and actually if it has a high purchase rate. So if that keyword has a high purchase rate and if there's a keyword that's actually getting people to click on your listing and purchase your listing, this is amazing information because now you know what keyword is driving the most attention and views to your listing. For example, I have this test shop. I just have this Etsy shop where 
I create digital products and I put them up there and kind of test the market. So I did this ad strategy where I basically put my budget pretty low. I think it was about three to five dollars a day and I probably kept ads running less than a week. And what happened was Etsy told me which keywords people were actually clicking through to my listing and I was getting sales as well. So this told me that this is a keyword that people are actually searching for to find something that they want, which is what I'm selling since they're clicking through to it and purchasing it. The crazy thing was a keyword I was being found for wasn't even something I was using. So I was using similar terms, but not in that exact order. And remember that Etsy likes relevancy. Basically what I did was I deleted my titles and my tags and the only title and tag that I had was that keyword that people were finding me for. And that forced the Etsy algorithm to only show my ad for that specific keyword, which I knew people were clicking on already. So it was perfect. It started getting more sales. And after I had about maybe six sales on this item, I turned off ads. Why did I do that? Well, because I knew that the Etsy algorithm was now going to see this listing as the desirable one since it was converting. And then I put all my other relevant keywords back in there. And now I've made about almost 30 sales on that listing. So this is just a cool way that you can actually hack the system. So using ads to find the most relevant keywords that people are actually clicking through to and purchasing your listing on. So you know which keyword to target. And then after that listing has a bunch of conversions and Etsy sees this listing as desirable, which you'll know because people will be buying it, then you can actually turn off ads. So that's the ads hack that I have for you. And it's a really great one. It definitely helped me take my dummy shop from kind of being in a saturated market to actually getting seen. And I don't have to pay for ads anymore. If you really want to knock it out of the park on Etsy or in your business in general, you need to look at the data and you need to do some things strategically. So my third hack for you is to look at the data. And I'm gonna tell you where to look in order to get the best results. So I suggest that you look at customer messages. I suggest that you take a look to see which listing is selling the most, what are people favoriting the most, and what are in people's carts. So all of this information can really help you out because what you wanna do is figure out what the heck is working and duplicate it. So what I noticed with my thank you cards, most of the time people were buying my pink thank you cards. So what did I do? I made more of them. I made more pink thank you cards. I saw the similarities, the patterns that were happening, and I just duplicated that and made more variations, but still kept to the pink theme because I knew that's what people were actually purchasing. Then what I did was I went into my conversations and I actually searched for the word color. I went through my conversations and I noticed that a lot of people were asking for a specific color. So that was my next thing. My next part of my strategy was instead of just making all different colors, I was looking to what the shoppers were actually asking for, what my customers were asking for, the colors they wanted, the sizes they wanted, and I created new listings based on what they were asking me for. This is seriously the best way to go about it because your shoppers, but when they're asking you questions, they're actually doing the market research for you. They're telling you what they want. So that's what I would suggest. Go in your conversations, search for color, size, whatever is relevant to your listings, and also look at what people are favoriting, purchasing, and putting in their cart because that's telling you really good information about what they want. And I know a lot of you guys struggle with knowing what your target audience wants, knowing what the market wants. I'm telling you guys, if you want to get really serious about growing on Etsy and building a profitable business, go watch the free training link down below. I go into a lot of detail about consumer psychology, ranking high in the Etsy search results, and also driving massive amounts of traffic to your shop. So if you are serious, definitely check out that free training. Again, the link is down below. Now I'm gonna give you a little bonus hack because this has also been a game changer for me. If you do want to test out new photos or you want to test out new SEO, etc., you want to duplicate your listing. And I'm gonna give you two reasons why. One reason is, is because if your listing is already performing pretty well, you don't wanna mess up your SEO or what you got going on already for that listing. So duplicating that listing will give it a neutral rating and that way, you can still have that successful listing doing its thing and you can just test things on that duplicated listing. 
The other reason is if a listing is not selling, over time Etsy actually gives your listings a ranking. And it's not something you can actually figure out or see, but if people have clicked on your listing and didn't convert enough times, or if they didn't click on your listing at all, then it might just be deemed as a listing that is just isn't good in Etsy's eyes, that customers don't want it. So they're gonna stop ranking it. But if you duplicate that listing, that listing now has a neutral rating. So now if it was your SEO or it was your listing descriptions or photos and now you change it on the duplicated listing, it has a fighting chance because it has a neutral rating as opposed to a negative rating that that original listing might have had. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, come say hello to me on Instagram at heyalissarose. I'll link that down below in the description box as well. Ask me questions, let me know what you thought about this video, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye guys.